Hey, everybody. Don't miss the next episode on Open at Microsoft, where we speak with Caleb Lidke about how to contribute packages to the Windows Package Manager community repository. Hey, everybody. I'm Demetrius Nealon. I'm the product manager for the Windows Package Manager here at Microsoft. And today I've got a very special guest with me. I have Caleb Lidke. He's a Microsoft MVP, and he's also one of our community moderators for the Windows Package Manager Manifest repository. And uh, I'm going to let him take it away from here, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about how you contribute packages. Thanks, Demetrius. Um, pleasure to be here. Um, I know in previous episodes of Open at Microsoft, you talked about the WinGit client and how that works, but I'd really like to focus now on more about the community contributions and really the uh, community repository. So uh, I'd actually like to show you a little bit about the community repository here. So if we jump over to there, uh, the community repository is where all of the packages that are available on WinGit uh, are housed. And so when we start looking, if we go into this manifests folder here, uh, every single package available on WinGit is inside one of these folders. And now uh, this uh, makes it really easy to see if as a contributor, if a package is in there, but if it's not available in Winget Search, it can be a little bit difficult to contribute. So what I like to do is, the first thing I do is if I can't find a package, uh, I jump over to the issues and I see if there's an issue open for it. Uh, and if there isn't uh, an issue open for a package, uh, I'll just create an issue and say, hey, th this package is uh, outdated or this package needs to be added. And then what happens is contributors from the repository will uh, be in this issues, watching these issues, and they'll pick up the issues as they go through. So as we can see here, there's even one right here for package outdated for uh, the Badland client. So one of the great things about open source is that anybody can contribute. So. I don't have to wait for somebody to pick this issue up and run with it. I don't have to wait for somebody else to add it. Uh, I can just add it myself. And so one of the way, best tools that I use to do that is actually Winget Create. So uh, I've gone over to the uh, Winget Create. Um, I've gone over to the Winget Create repository here and I've downloaded the latest release. Could you have just installed that with Winget? Yep, I absolutely could have. So if I go over to the, the terminal and, and I do Winget search for Winget create, it shows right up. And we'll see here. I could install it through Winget and I could run it. Um, so I actually am going to run it right now since uh, I did see the issue a little bit earlier this afternoon uh, about um, the Badland client. So I'm actually going to run Winget Create. And I've already configured this with my GitHub token using the Winget Create token command. So in order to actually run an update, contribute the update here, I'm going to do Winget Create. And I'm going to submit an update. Uh, and then I pass it in the package identifier that I want to update. So here I know that uh, it's going to be the badlion dot client badlion client. And I'm going to actually run this in interactive mode by uh, uh, attaching the tick i, uh, so that way we can get a better idea of what's actually happening. So the first thing it asks me for is what the installer URL is. Um, and I happen to have this on hand. I'm just going to copy and paste it in here and just press enter. And Winget Create is going to then download and parse the package file. So what it's doing when it's uh, parsing the package is it downloads the installer, and then it tries to fill in as much of the manifest uh, as is needed for Winget. So it, it looks for things like if it's an XE file, is it built with the null soft or Inno framework? If it's an MSI, is it built with Wix? Can it fetch the product code automatically from the database? Uh, and it's as it's compiling all this information, it's going to put it right into the manifest and, and build it for me. So really, Winget Create is a tool that makes it so I don't have to go out and find a lot of that information myself. So you can see here, it 
it finished parsing. It updated the installer. It's asking me if I want to continue. Um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, it looks like it just threw an exception there. Yeah, so reading through this, um, when Wingit create uh, spits out the manifest, uh, it attempts to validate the, its output right away. And so it says it, it wasn't able to validate it. And the description is that the uh, installer URL failed to meet, match uh, on the pattern. Um, so if I take a look at what I actually pasted in here, it looks like there was a space in front of it. So that sounds I'm like a bug we need to fix. It, it certainly is. So I'm actually going to go and create a new issue over at Winget Create. And this is another great way for people to contribute is just by filing bug reports as they find them. Uh, so in this case, you know, I know that the installer URL that I pasted in had a, a white space in the front. So the white space is not trimmed properly because, you know, we would expect that if there's space trailing or leading spaces uh, that they would be trimmed off. So I'm going to put in the title uh, and then a brief description of the issue here is just what did I experience? So when an, an installer URL, if I can type the today, um, so when an installer URL has a, a leading white space, the white space is not trimmed. And that throws a validation error. And even just the simple bug reports like these, you know, it, it steps to reproduce. You know, the more detail, the better, but a quick bug report is better than no re bug report at all. Absolutely. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and just submit that as is, I'll go ahead and update it while you continue on. Absolutely. I'll just throw in some periods here so that way we can submit that. And so the, the other tool, you know, since that threw an error, there's actually another tool that's out there. There's uh, lots of different tools that you can use to create manifests. Uh, the one I like to use is called YAML Create. And it's actually over here in the Winget Packages repository. Uh, and it's in the Tools folder. So if we go into the Tools folder, it's just a PowerShell script. Uh, and so we can run that in PowerShell. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually jump over to Visual Studio Code. And we can see here I've got my own fork and clone of the Winget Packages repository. And let me see if I can just make this a little bit bigger for everyone. All I'm going to do is uh, call the script directly. Just like with Winget Create, um, you can call it directly. And here it's going to ask, what do I want to do? And, and it's interactive, so uh, I'm actually just going to do a quick update here. And it's going to prompt for all the information it needs. So that's one of the great things about YAML Create is that I don't have to remember the order of the arguments. I don't have to uh, remember uh, any of the parameters that it takes. It asks me exactly what it needs and nothing more. And so it says you need to know the version. So I, I put the version in there. And in fact, you can actually see that uh, one difference between YAML create and Winget create is YAML creates telling me that there might already be a pull request open for this change. You know, I've actually taken a look at that pull request in the past, uh, and I know that I actually want to continue in this case. Um, so I'm just going to hit yes. Um, and it shows me, you know, would you like, what's the URL? So I'm just going to paste that in there. And it's going to do very much the same thing as Winget Create. It's going to download it. It's going to parse the installer, find as much metadata as it can. And then it's going to spit out the manifest and validate it. Um, what I like about the PowerShell script too is that by running it directly in Visual Studio Code, I can see exactly how the manifest looks. Uh, without having to go through and view it in the terminal. So once it finishes processing, I'll be able to see the changes in my git source tree 
and I'll even be able to manually update some fields. So if the copyright is a little bit off, you know, I can update it. So if I go over here and I click uh, on the file, we can see, you know, absolutely the, there's the manifest. The, the other nice thing about YAML Create is it, it allows me to test in the Windows Sandbox if I am on a system that supports it. So because I've got the Windows Sandbox enabled, uh, if I hit yes here, it would uh, run the test script and install the latest version in the Windows Sandbox. Uh, I'm going to so skip like that. YAML Create gives you a really good experience for kind of that interactive flow. Um, I know when we kind of built the uh, the Winget Create tool to begin with, we were really thinking about CI CD scenarios. So if you look at uh, Power Toys or Oh My Posh, they've got GitHub actions that'll actually automatically update the manifests. You know, and really that's kind of the best place to be is when publishers are updating their own manifests. But definitely, if something is not there, you know, making those con community contributions are fantastic. That, that's a great point, and you're absolutely right. Um, you know, YAML Create was contributed by the community, and so it's really built around the community and what they want and what their asks are. Uh, anybody can even contribute to YAML Create um, or even also to Wing Create um, by submitting a pull request in the appropriate repository. Um, and, you know, another functionality here is, you know, both of them allow us to submit pull requests automatically if we choose to. So really, YAML Create has been built by developers for this sort of interactive environment where you're using it in VS Code, you're using it in multiple places, um, and you're absolutely right. Winget Create is definitely more of the CICD scenario, uh, although it can be used interactively as well. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you may have uh, suggested a couple of future topics for us to cover here at uh open at Microsoft. Absolutely. Um, th there's a ton of options for that. And really, there's so many ways to get involved uh, with Winget Create and Winget, Winget Create. And what we covered today is just a small portion of what's out there. I mean, every contribution helps and I would love to see more people get involved. Uh, it's just the highlight of my day every time I can go into that repository and I see a new contributor uh, opening pull requests, trying to learn more about the product. Uh, that's one of the reasons that I contribute so much too, is seeing others contribute inspires me. That's awesome. I love to hear that. Well, I really appreciate you taking time out of your busy day with us and uh, look forward to a few episodes with you. Yeah, it's a pleasure and glad to be here. Look forward to it. Thanks. Hey, I'm Kadesha, and I'm here to let you know that May is Maintainer Month. At GitHub, we're celebrating maintainers all month long by providing a place to gather, share, and learn together. Come join our month-long events and activities to be a part of the celebration and share your story with other maintainers and join the maintainer community. We have workshops, podcasts, conferences, meetups, and much more planned for you to enjoy all month long. Go to maintainermonth.github.com to see and create your schedule and be a part of the celebration. See you there.